श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव मेनी ऑफ अस हैव a uh, notion about meditation <clears throat> that meditation is a means a corrective measure for repairing the unhealthy mind therefore you will see everywhere they speak about this meditation for stress relief meditation for frustration meditation for worldly tensions it is something like go to gym if you have got a spondylosis do exercise if you have got a fractured leg see meditation is not meant for unhealthy minds aru ruksho mune yoga karma karana muchyate yoga unasya tasseva shamah karana muchyate bhagwan says in bhagavad gita those who want to achieve stability in life they must take refuge in karma in such a manner that there are no loose ends left in life whatever has to be done finish it off when this is not done and we want to do meditation so what will be the meditation suppose today we are all sitting for meditation and one of you have decided to give you food and then you will sit for meditation what will be meditation after meditation when i go home i have to cut the onion give tadka dal and then in meditation because something is yet to be done therefore first step we should be very clear meditation is not a prophylactic major for curing the unhealthy minds no the mind has to be healthy for the healthy body only the gym is not for the unhealthy body first second thing meditation can be only for those who have effortlessly and sufficiently withdrawn from the world and those who have no problem from the world now their only problem is that they want to work on their mind so that the mind gets dissolved in consciousness therefore basics the fundamentals must be clear before we take up anything in life for example if somebody wants to be a good surgeon the first requirement for him he must have a perfect undoubted knowledge about the anatomy of the body no anatomy i will learn later let me be uh, you know first surgeon you cannot in the same manner the fundamentals are what is meditation is meditation done why meditation these pandas should be clear so the first will take is meditation a verb or a noun first step is like take an example love is it a verb or a noun when a boy falls in love with a girl for him 
Love is a verb. I have fallen in love with her and got hurt, resulting into marriage. This is love as a verb. Now the mother has love for the child. See, so there love is a noun. You get this point very clear. In the same manner, is meditation a verb or a noun? If it is a verb, we will do meditation. And whenever we do anything in life, it ends. Because anything which is created through action ends after the force of the action is over. Like if you take a stone, the stone by itself cannot fly. So we take the stone and throw it at a distance. So as long as our energy is associated with the stone, which is without energy, it will keep on flying. But after the energy provided to the stone is exhausted, it will fall. Exactly the same way. When we do meditation, half an hour meditation in the morning and the whole day frustration. Because you did meditation, it will begin, it will end. Therefore, meditation, if you take a verb, will struggle, will struggle and nothing else. And whenever something is done, a doer is born. Like many people ask us, some of you, do you do meditation? Because meditation is an action. So, this is one. Second thing. If meditation is a noun, what does it mean? Okay. Noun is not created. Noun is. Like the love for the child in the heart of the mother, that love is. And therefore, the mother's love for the child remains throughout her life. Whatever may be the child, good or bad. Because it is not a verb. It will not be exhausted. Similarly, we have to now take meditation as a noun. No more as a verb. Now what does it mean? See, what is our present experience, let us analyze and then learn from it. Do we ever say, I did waking up? No. I am in the waking experience and then do the things. Then, do we say, I dream? No. We are in the dream and then do the things. We don't do dreaming. We are in the dream state. Similarly, we are in the deep sleep and then we snore. Try to snore when you are not sleeping. You cannot. So, we are in the deep sleep and then we snore. Three things. So, we are in waking, then we do the things. We are in dream, then we have funny experiences. We are in deep sleep, then there is a snoring. So, when in the deep sleep, snoring happens, be attentive. When in deep sleep, when snoring happens, that time, is there somebody who is snoring? In deep sleep, there is nobody. No man, no woman, no husband, no wife, no brother, no sister, no young, no old, no rich, no poor. Then snoring is happening. See? Snoring without a snorer. See? Dreaming without a dreamer. Waking experiences 
without a waker. See friends, in the same manner, meditation without a meditator. This is the noun. See friends, and this is what Arjuna's question when he heard from Bhagavan Sri Krishna that the steadiness in wisdom is important than steadiness in the posture. In the second chapter, Bhagavan glorifies the intellect eight times, not once. Buddha Sharana Manvicha Krupanaha Shatpalahetavaha. And he says, Shruti Vipprati Pannati Yadas Thasati Nishchala Samadha Vachala Buddhi Tada Yogam Avapsasi. You have heard so much, my dear Arjuna. Because of that excessive knowledge, we, you cannot manage, you cannot handle, you have got a hodgepodge khichadi in your head. Shruti Vipprati Panna Buddhi. You are confused totally. Unless this confusion settles, there is no place for Samadhi for you. See friends. And when the steadiness of wisdom was glorified by Bhagavan Sri Krishna, he asked a question. Then what is the meaning of Samadhi or meditation for a man of steady wisdom? So he is still holding on to the Samadhi. So to tell this, Bhagavan Krishna says, the man of steady wisdom is living 24-7 in meditation. He is not doing meditation. He is living in meditation. Like a waker lives in the waking. The dreamer lives in the dreaming. The deep sleeper lives in the deep sleep. Similarly, the Meditator is always in meditation because for him meditation is not coming and going. Like the waking comes and goes, dream comes and goes, deep sleep comes and goes and uh, uh, meditation or samadhi bring, begins and ends. In this way he is not the man of steady wisdom. Man of steady wisdom is 24 seven in meditation. That is what is to be learned, understood. Otherwise, you will get many crash courses in meditation. They are called, you know, shortcut meditations. There was one girl in uh, LA, last year I met her, she came for some of my talk and she asked this question. She gave her visiting card. Swamiji, I am a yoga teacher. Here every Tom, Dick and Harry is a yoga teacher. So give a yoga teacher and said, um, Swamiji, I have practiced and teach this yoga. When I read it, yoga below tree, yoga under a tree, this was the yoga she is teaching. She said, do you teach? I said, yes, I also teach. What is yoga on the tree? <laughs> See, this is yoga, it's a cartoon of yoga. See friends, therefore we have to live in meditation. If this is clear, then what way we should begin? Let us take the words of Bhagavan. Living in meditation means Prajahati Yada Kaman Sarvan Partha Manogatan Step number one. Atmane Vatmana Tushta Kita Pradnes Tadochate. These two things. When we live at zero desire level and we are at peace with ourselves, we are living in meditation. Observe at this moment your own mind. We 
We have not done anything. <coughs> Therefore, what should be the practice of meditation? <coughs> practice of meditation should be freedom from desires. That is meditation. Now to get freedom from desire, we must know what is the genesis of desire. If we want to reduce our weight, we must know what is the cause of increase of our weight and then we come to know we have got a thyroid problem. So correct that. In the same manner, what is the cause of the desires? <coughs> There are two causes. Number one, the cause of desire is a sense of incompleteness in oneself. Otherwise, why a young, healthy, educated, happy man should think of getting married? He has a sense of incompleteness. What a life without a wife. Well, I am incomplete. <coughs> then he gets married. So, after the marriage, <coughs> he comes to know what a life because of the wife. See the difference? So, the sense of incompleteness is the cause of desire, number one. Number two, Sense of otherness is the cause of desire. <coughs> See, for example, I don't have a very good, beautiful Rudraksha Mala done in gold in my neck. And I see in some of you, oh, it is so good, so nice, you know. You do the japa every day with Rudraksha Mala in the gold. No, Swamiji, it is only an ornament. God, we are de deleted long back. But I don't have that. You like it, Sanjay, take it. I wanted to get rid of it, you know. I also thought putting in Rudraksha Mala will be good. But now it is hurting everywhere. Anyway, you take it. So, <clears throat> sense of incompleteness and sense of otherness. These are the two causes of desire. And till such time we entertain desire, we cannot be in meditation. Bhagavan Krishna tells, <clears throat> Our deep sleep and meditation or samadhi are almost same. Almost. Little difference. He says, <clears throat> Yanisha Sarva Bhutanam Tasyam Jagarti Sayyami Yasyam Jagarti Bhutani Sanisha Pashato Mune. The wise one who is living in meditation 24 7, he is awakened to that experience which never gets corrupted under any condition, and otherwise is the one. Who is, although living that experience 24 7, yet he is struggling to get that experience. It is something like this. Panchadashi tells in very straight words. Although we are all experiencing our continuous unbroken presence without any effort, without any means of knowledge, without anybody telling us, Yet we say, I don't know myself. It is something like this. Can somebody make a statement? I don't have a tongue in my mouth. A person who doesn't have a tongue in his mouth, he will never speak. And a person who says, he is telling a lie. In the same manner, can somebody say that I don't know myself? Can somebody say, I know myself? Both are wrong and both are right. 
this experience which doesn't demand any means of knowledge is 24 hour hours available to us we have to only recognize that this process of recognition of one's essential nature is called as meditation so we start aim is freedom from desires good cause is sense of incompleteness what is that because of which we feel incomplete is that i am limited by time i am limited by space i am limited by object how i am limited by time i am 60 years of age i am 80 years of age limitation of time <coughs> then i am 6 foot tall and 4 foot wide limitation of space and then i am 3 tons weight limitation of object these three things desha kala vastu is with reference to a body so this body i am this body i am not this is the limitation and till such time we hold on to the body identification there cannot be freedom from desires see desires after the body identification have got only two options one option is i want to live and the second option is i want to leave both those who want to live l i v e and those who want to leave l e v e both of them are identified with the body those who want to leave die away they think that because of the body i am suffering and those who want to live long they think because of the body i will die therefore i should live long see friends therefore the first step in meditation is we have neither desire to live nor desire to die and this can happen only if we live 100% only today but all the time worried about the future i don't know what is going to happen if we don't know then enjoy man why worry so one definition of meditation will be what living in today's date you are living in meditation first step now the second step if i have to live today only and free myself from the limitations of time space and object desha kala vastu then these three things are limiting me because i have taken myself to be the body so what will be the second step of meditation second step of meditation will be freedom from body identification now for that there are many techniques told in the scriptures one of the technique that most of us uh, practice but do not know is the technique of asana sitting in a particular posture and then what happens we imagine sitting in one particular posture for a long period of time is meditation and then all the efforts are sitting in one posture without movement 
and it doesn't happen because pain here, pain there, pain, pain everywhere. See? So, simply sitting in one posture is not the goal of uh, sitting in a asana. Patanjali has defined asana as thira sukham asanam. Steadiness of bliss is asana. Not steadiness of posture. See, sthira, an adjective, is attached to the sukham, the happiness, the bliss. Sthira, as an adjective, is not attached to the posture, asana. See, <clears throat> sthira sukham asana. Then in the next sutra, the teacher gives. What is the technique? The technique he gives, two techniques. Number one, Prayatna Shaitilya. Prayatna Shaitilya means lead your life as effortless as possible. Our life is full of efforts to prove something to somebody. So, the husband wants to prove to his wife that he loves her. She wants to prove to the husband she cares for him. The children want to prove that I love my parents. The parents want to prove that I care for them. Oh, life is a struggle, struggle, struggle. Wherever there is a struggle, I is born. Wherever there is a struggle, we are not normal. Now those who are hard of hearing, for example, they have to struggle to listen because the hearing ability is not normal. And whenever we struggle in life, we get tired. See, wise people are never tired in life because they don't struggle. They don't have to prove anything to anybody in this world. See friends, this is, this understanding when this practice, that is called as living in meditation. See friends, so prayatna shaitilya, so when we are sitting in a posture, what should happen is freedom from body identification. Now, for example, this mic stand, which is in front of me, this mic stand, if you observe, what is the secret that this mic stand is not uh, moving or not falling down? Because whatever may be the shape of this mic stand, the center of gravity is exactly in the center of the base. The moment the center of gravity is displaced, this will fall down. See? Exactly the same way, when we are sitting, where is the center of gravity of the body? Many times when we sit, either one leg is pressed more or other leg is pressed more, then this leg gives pain, then we lift this leg and bring him beta, never mind, sit and this leg is laying down, then this day leg start giving pain, <coughs> then we take this fellow, okay, you also come, and both the legs we have to go, and then from the ba base it starts paining, oh God, then we go into Shavasana, forget about meditation, yeah, so yeah. This happens only because we have not practiced and understood the secret, how to sit, in such a manner that like a car, we park our car in a proper secured way, then enter the temple, thereafter we don't care about the car because it is properly parked. Suppose you park it in a tow away zone and come for two minutes, in that two minutes also you cannot focus attention on the God because unless somebody will take it away. In the same manner, we park our body on the seat 
and get out of the body. This is meditation to begin with. The goal is very clear. Not simply sitting in one posture, but the goal is we discover freedom from body identification. That is the goal. Now, if you take this tripod or this uh, mic stand, there are three things which a perfect asana should have. First, the base must be firm. Like, you know, this base on the stool where I kept this uh, stand, if it is soft, like, you know, some dunlap pillow, etc. If I keep, if it is soft, it will not be firm. So the base must be formed. Once you sit in one posture, don't move. Second thing, vertically, the body should be steady. No more rocking. Like you know, many people when they chant, that time they keep on rocking. Like Urdhva Mola Madhashakam Mashratam Ravaravayam Jandam Reyasya Bharadani No. So the base is firm, vertically body is steady. And third, the body is 100% relaxed as in deep sleep. See, the only difference is in deep sleep, body is relaxed, the mind is also relaxed, but the mind is not alert. The mind is not vigilant. In this meditation, the body is 100% relaxed, like in deep sleep, but the mind is not sleeping. The mind is alert and vigilant. So this is the first destination in meditation to be reached. So for that, as you are sitting, whichever way you feel comfortable, sit down. Lesser the surface area to which the body is exposed, more is the possibility of stability of asana. If we are sitting with the support of the back, the surface area of the body increases and it is a very conducive environment for going to sleep. Therefore, if health-wise, if you are able to keep your back away from the support of the back or else you will sleep. Then second thing, the center of the uh, body structure, it is like a cone, three um, sides equal, the center of this body falls exactly in between the two pin bones. Pin bones are the pelvic bone which is touching the floor, the ischai points medically called. So let the weight of the body land in between these two bones, that is the base of the spine. Let the hands land in your lap so that the base of the center of gravity is not misplaced. Now with this, when you sit, then we take up the next step with a clear understanding that we have to get rid of this body identification. Assuming you are sitting like this, I will go further. First, psychological adjustment. We are cheerful and happy. We are not come here under any pressure or compulsion. Anything which is done happily 
is never tiring and frustrating. Second adjustment, in our heart is our beloved Lord and the Guru Maharaj. The Lord protects us from ourselves and the Guru Maharaj guides us from within. Now the third adjustment, at this moment we take the position of Mr. Nobody. Mr. Nobody means there is no past in the utter present without the reference of the past we are Mr. Nobody. In other words we close the chapter of total past. Fourth adjustment, we are to close the chapter of future, therefore we don't plan what we will do after meditation. When there is no importance to the past, future also becomes meaningless. Now we are in the utter present. Now if you observe your body, you will clearly see that the base of the body has become firm and vertically the body is steady. Now we have to relax the body. I will give instructions to your body your body will understand. Please don't come between the instructions and your body. Otherwise we keep on asking questions which are meaningless. It will happen. Relax the head muscles. Relax the forehead. The eyebrows, relax the eyelids, softly closing on the eyes, relax the eyeballs, not seeing anything particularly, focus to infinite. Relax the nose, the face, lips, chin. Relax the ears, the neck from all the four sides, the throat sides and the neck side. Hand down the shoulders. We unnecessarily lift them up. Relax the shoulder joints, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrist, arm and fingers. 
relax, relax, relax. Let us pause for a moment. The body is now divided in two parts, relaxed and not yet relaxed. Relaxed parts are with minimum muscle tension and muscle tone. The hands are heavily landed in the lap. The fingers are firmly interlocked. The rest of the body is with the usual tension and muscle tone etc. Now come to the shoulders again to relax the rest of the body. Relax the chest muscles. Go downwards, abdomen, right up to the floor. Relax the sides from the shoulders below, right up to the hip joints. Both sides. Relax the neck downwards along the spine and the whole of back. Go downwards slowly, slowly. Right up to the pin bones. Now one more observation. The weight of the body has increased on the base. We may get pulsation of the vessels because the body is relaxing. Now relax the hips, the hip joints, thighs, knees, half muscles, Ankles, heels, and toes. Relax, relax, relax. Now, as if walk out of your body. And we can see so many bodies seated here. There is no difference between other bodies and this body, which we claim to be us and ours. So take the front view of your body. From the top, go downward slowly the forehead, the eyes, etc. right up to the base. On your march, if there are tensions of patches here and there, relax them. Go to the right side of your body. Don't forget you are outside. Start from the top. See the right side of the head, right ear, right side of the neck, right shoulder. Thus go downwards slowly, slowly. Relax if there are patches of tensions. Now go on the back side. Don't forget you are outside the body.
start from the top go to the base on your way relax if there are some tensions go slowly downwards right up to the pin bones Now go to the left side of the body and take the left view from outside. Repeat the same process. But here you will see there are more tension patches because the other three sides were relaxed. So iron them out completely. No tensions of any kind are left. Now come in the front of your body. Now some observations. The shape, the form, the contour line of the body has become non-distinct and therefore the concept that I am inside the body or outside the body has become really meaningless. All this happened because the mind has given up the shape and the form of the body. Therefore, the individual mind has merged in the total mind. Like Few ice cubes, if we put them in waters, after some time they dissolve and merge in the total waters in the same manner. Mind with a particular shape and size of the body is like the ice cube. When by this technique we have seen, we drop the body means the mind gives up the shape of the body. Now we are like in deep sleep, no sense of incompleteness and no sense of otherness. Our position is now like <coughs> the total space. Space supports all the shapes and the forms, all the objects.
after some time the old habit of the mind will start taking possession of us therefore now engage the mind in plain <coughs> meditation meditation so we take the position what is other than the body is the space so we take the position of the space what it is like being space so reflect on this space supports everything but doesn't get influenced by anything this is meditation space begins space never begins never modifies never ends body begins modifies and ends being space like means no birth no growth no death so we have the shape space this and that apple bodies are many space is one is so one unchanging uncreated unending reality is our essential nature as the gross space doesn't get influenced by the gross objects in the same manner the mental space doesn't get influenced by any thought so be indifferent to all the things indifferent means we don't care good thoughts bad thoughts
absence of thoughts is not an achievement. Presence and absence of thoughts is equal. Whether there is waking dream or deep sleep, it makes no difference to me. The eternal presence. In deep sleep, we are not aware of things happening around us. But now, everything we are aware, but not influenced by anything. If our awareness disappears, mind closes, then it is the Jada Samadhi, like a rock. That all perceptions, the sound, the smell, the temperature, Everything is experienced, but an experiencer is not born. So hearing is happening, but hearer is not born. Therefore, hearing doesn't create disturbance. Experience without experiencer is God realization. Knowledge without knower is merging in God. Joy without an enjoyer is God manifestation. Prayatna Shaitilya, freedom from efforts, is possible only when Ananta Samapatti means merging in the infinite. The individual I has dissolved in the absolute, and now it is only a drama. That is being played.
this effortlessness is our natural state. Efforts are added when somebody is born. Take a deep breath two or three times, very slow. Now the body identification has happened. Move the toes and the fingers. Now the concept that I am inside the body and the world is outside has become real and therefore I is born who is a limited entity and to remove the limitation desires will be born and samsara will continue. But with this knowledge and experience, if we live through life without carrying the burden of uncalled for desires, Bhagavan Krishna says, Shariram Kevalam Karma Kurvan Naknoti Kirvisham. Life is just maintained without struggling to fulfill insatiable desires, then we start living in meditation. This is what Bhagavan says, Yogaratova, Bhogaratova, Sangaratova, Sangamena, Yasya Brahmanramati Chittam Nandati Nandati Nandati. Offer everything at the feet of the Lord. Don't make a memory of this experience. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Yoga Namaha Hari Om